Welcome Fly Tires to another Tying Tuesday from Avid Max. My name is Brady Lair and today we're going to show you how to tie a foam bodied stimulator. So if anybody that's fly fished and enjoys dry flies I'm sure knows about the stimulator. It's a very popular pattern, it's been redone and redeveloped many times. This is going to be a foam body version which really just adds to the buoyancy of it, helps keeping it floating longer throughout the day. You don't have to cure it near as much uh, and still looks great just like the traditional stimulators do. I'm gonna go ahead and start my thread and I'm gonna use this starting point as to kind of gauge where my thorax is gonna be two or three hook eyes back. It's typically a good estimate. So then we'll walk our thread back just a little ways here. So we'll go all the way back to where we're gonna tie in our tailing material. And for this fly, we're gonna use our l -care. I'm using a Wapsi Primo strip. Should tell you I'm tying on the Firehole 718 hook. It's a great profile for a stimulator. It's got that elongated limerick bend uh, and then a nice spear point for good hookups. And then the thread we're going to be using today is our Vivas 10 Ot in orange. So nice rich orange color. Gives a good finished thread head to this pattern. So kind of a sparse tail for this. Not too many fibers. I want to keep my body somewhat small underneath where the foam's going to be. And we're going to measure. I'm going to use that hook gape there to measure out my tail for consistencies. And we can transfer that and put it right on on top of the hook shank here just like so and then to keep our body nice and consistent we'll use this l care to wrap down also going to add some buoyancy to the fly with these hollow l care fibers come on up trim out that excess Like so, using my nice sharp Dr. Slick razor hair scissors, some of my favorite scissors. And then we'll just clean this up slightly here, work on back, cinching that material down as we go. And then we can come in and add our hackle. And we're going to use some brown. This is the Whiting High and Dry cape that I'm using today. It's a great, beautiful cape from Whiting Farms. They make nothing less than beautiful capes, saddles, all kinds of feathers. So we'll prep our feather. Just go ahead and pull out some of those barbels to give ourselves a nice clean quill to tie in. And fix that on the side of the hook shank here. come right back down and add in our foam. So we trimmed out our foam. I like again like using these hair scissors because they have nice long blades on them. Makes it easy to get a nice thin piece of foam. I taper it just slightly so that the back end is a little bit thicker than that front end I'm going to tie in. You can use a paper cutter for this as well but you won't be able to do the taper from doing so. I also before I tie it in I'll Trim it down even beyond that slightly to keep the nice, nice underbody thin to this fly. So we're going to tie that in. I'm going to tie it in the length of what our abdomen is and secure it down as I go back, nice and snug, right up to that tail and then we can work forward and get our thread out of the way to wrap that foam. And I'm just going to do a quick thread base up to the head there and finish, do a half hitch where I'm going to finish the foam here. Do one more. There we are, throw our thread on the bobbin cradle. If you've never fished a stimulator, it's a must. Fishes well, 
mostly in the warmer seasons, but don't be afraid to tie it on in the shoulder seasons as well to see if you can encourage a hungry fish in a big meal. Fish is great. Still water, all kinds of different rivers, tailwaters, free stones, super versatile fly. You tie it in a lot of different variations to match a lot of different bugs. This orange version we're doing today best represents a salmon fly. Work well as a golden stone fly and larger caddis flies, all kinds of different bugs, terrestrials. Really a go to pattern. So we'll capture our foam, we'll trim out our excess there. You can see in doing so, I left just a little bump and I want to make sure that that piece doesn't slide out on me. So we'll give it some nice snug securing wraps here. Just like so. And then we can half hitch once more. So I tied my hackle in at the back of the hook. Traditionally a stimulator you would tie in your wire, your ribbing at the back of the hook and then your hackle would start right here between the abdomen and the thorax and you'd wrap your hackle back and then your wire back over it. I do this just for simplicity. Helps to keep the hackle flared out nicely as well. So we'll work that forward with the open palmer wraps here right over that foam body to where our thread's at, waiting for it. And then we can come in and capture it off. I'm going to slick these back, make sure they're going rearward here. Try to avoid capturing as much of that as possible, or as little of that as possible. So we'll sneak through, capture it down, pull it back and sneak in front. clip out that excess material and anything that may have gotten trapped wildly on out of there and then we're ready for our elk hair wing actually before we do the wing let's put a little flash on this fly so we're going to use just a little bit of pearl ice stub as an under wing help draw some attention to this fly give it some translucence we'll measure it right to where our tail goes, which will match what our wing is going to do. And I always fold in a few, wrap it down, and then pull it back over top of itself and double it up. Just helps to keep it nice and secure there. And we can clean up our taper here slightly. We want a nice smooth transition for when we go to do our hackle. Put that out the same length and add our wings. So more elk hair, bleached elk hair. That's what I'm using today. Stack that real nicely. Get all the under fur out of it. Nice and clean. Pull out any of those broken tips. Until you have a nice clean bundle to tie in. And again, you can kind of use that hook cape just as a gauge to measure your clump to see you're going to be the, doing the same size as all your other flies. So then I'll measure out where that wing is going to go. Clip out that excess material right on down to where that tie-in point is. And then we will capture it here quickly with a couple of loose wraps so I can make sure I'm still positioned well. And then go ahead and cinch it on down. And work back. As you work back, not too much tension on these because you want that wing to still lay somewhat flat. You don't want it to flare quite as much as an elk hair would. And then as you come on up, you can really bite into it and secure it down. I always come in and clip out this bundle that flared out like an elk hair caddis head because we're going to cover it up and create a base for dubbing and for our final piece of hackle. So we'll clean that up, wrap over top of all that material and transition a nice smooth 
space here. So you can bite down onto that elk hair real nice and get it to lay down underneath your thread. So we'll come on right back to the rear and we'll prepare to tie in our hackle. So the front piece of the hackle is also a high and dry saddle or sorry, cape I have from whiting here, just a grizzly. And we'll do the same thing we did with the brown. You want to gauge up just slightly on this front hackle, kind of creates a nice transition to the ply. But we'll wrap that in place right here and towards the back. Oop, move it around on you, see that? And then we can come and dub that off. I'm going to use some ice dub, golden brown. One of my favorite ice dub colors. It's just kind of a natural brown, but then it has all those yellows uh, and golds in it for the flashy aspect. Great stonefly color and has a lot of different applications. So we'll dub ourselves a nice noodle here using some Loon Low Tack Thwax to help Keep it nice and tight. And we'll just work our way down with it. Covering up all those thread wraps as we go. And also being aware of our transition here. When we go to wrap that hackle, we want a nice smooth transition so it doesn't slip on us as we go down. Takes a minute to noodle up the ice step because it's so fibery, but work at it and you can get it to lay down and bind on itself pretty well. There we are, do another half hitch here right behind the hook eye. And then we can bring that hackle forward. Do one wrap right behind and then start to work forward from there. You can space it out a little bit. You can run them right up next to each other on the head. Just depends on that look you're going for and how full you want this fly to be when it's all done. More there. And then we'll come on down with our thread. Capture that off. These fibers work back so we're not going to capture them by accident. And clip out that excess. And then we finish ourselves a nice little thread head here. And we got ourselves a nice little foam-bodied stimulator.